Hey, welcome back to the Montana Garage. This time, swing out door bars, baby. Also, be sure you stick around because near the end of the video, we're gonna play Montana Garage Trivia and you're gonna have a chance to win big. See up here for details. Still working on this roll bar, it's time to get going on the door bars. Originally, I was just gonna make the passenger side swing out because uh, I want people to be able to get in the back seat. For the driver's side, I don't really mind crawling over the door bar if that's the case. But just with the way it has to be installed, I think I am gonna order one more of these kits and make the driver's side door swing out also. Uh, I think actually I'm gonna start with the driver's side, then we'll just order one more of those kits. We'll do the passenger side later once that comes in. And technically, again, according to the rule book, there only has to be a door bar on the driver's side. I'm sure I'll end up doing it on both sides, but I am gonna start on the driver's side just in case I never get to it or decide I don't want to do it over there. Let's get rolling on that bad boy. With the swing out door bar kit, you get uh, a tab that goes over here on this guy. Now this goes in the end of the tube coming up through the floor. And then these go in the ends of the door bar tube. You know, then those two kind of do this one handed. Fit together like so with a pin and then you can take it, swing it out or take it completely out. So. They give you this little piece here, and this goes back to if you were gonna plate the floor and then have this mounted to a plate on the floor. Now, just with the angles of everything are at, obviously it doesn't, well, let's see, probably be, no, it'd be this way. I'd have to angle that tube. You'd have to, I'd have to weld a eighth inch plate here, angle this tube, figure it all out. I got a seam, I got this, I got a body mount, so I can't cover that. I would rather not mount this door bar to the sheet metal, even with a plate. I want to take it to the frame, even though technically I don't think you're required to. But that's my plan. So to do that, we're going to drill a hole right here that the door bar is going to go through. Let's go over to the 57 deliver here and we'll take a peek. Show you, I'm kind of modeling after how they did it. Now, whether this is right or wrong or whatever, I don't know, but it, it looks like it worked. So we'll try this. And like I said, we'll drill a hole in the floor down there. That door bar is gonna go right through the floor, right through the floor, out of the floor, and then we'll have a piece of pipe that takes a turn and then welds it to the frame. So to accomplish that turn, I'm gonna use this other, this is the original down bar that they gave me that I ended up replacing because it wasn't long enough. Now, in a perfect world, this would be a 90 degree bend, and I still may take it somewhere and have it bent at 90 degrees, but I'm gonna probably try to just use it like this. So it'll come through the floor, it will have a little shallower than 90 degree bend, and then I'll just have to cut this at whatever angle I need to to make you know this part run straight into the car. So we're on the outside of the firewall now, so this hole's gonna be right in here. Tube's gonna come down, make its turn, and hit the frame right there. That's the theory, we'll see if we can make it work out. All right, so there's this hole. I want to try to keep it as low as I can. I want to keep it as far to the side as I can, obviously. I may, probably not, but I may someday, you know, plan on putting at least like a kick panel on here. So I'm going to sneak it over a little bit so I got some room between all this stuff, you know, and then it has to come up to the bar. It does have to cross the driver between the shoulder and the elbow. So once I get the hole in, then I can throw the tube in there, put the seat back in and then kind of figure out for sure how high it needs to be or what the angle is going to be at. One other small detail, once the bar's in here, I did want to try to save my armrest. And they're laying right there. I went and grabbed them because I put them on here. I don't think there's really any way that I'm going to be able to save the armrest. I'm just going to put the bar where it goes, the armrest, you know, if I can notch it and still use it or something. But really the bar is there. You can rest your arm on the bar, right? Or if the bar is removed and we're just doing street driving for a long time and we're not going to have the bar in then we can have the you know armrest on then and not on when the bar is in i don't know we'll figure it all out it doesn't really matter eventually uh when whoever gets to drive this car someday that probably won't be me because it's never going to be done well they'll they'll decide all right seats back in place so i can try to determine this bar goes. Ah. Hello. Hello. Right about there is about shoulder height based on my mark. So say we're centered. It says it's supposed to cross the driver between the elbow and the shoulder. 
In the picture, it shows the guy like with his arm on the wheel and it's going below just as below his elbow. I think if I go bottom of the tube at the black mark, it's between my elbow and my shoulder. All right, let's look at that from the outside. Ah. All right, so I pretty much determined if the bottom of the door bar hits about where the top of the crossbar is, which would be a little higher than we are right there, we're gonna be pretty golden. Just barely gonna see the bar through the window there, and it should cross between my shoulder and elbow. So now I'm trying to figure out the placement and the angle of this little guy. So I figure out the angle, I'm just, I have the bar a little, clamped a little lower than I need it. And then, you know, that'll be mid-bar once we have it in place. So that'll raise up the bar to where I want it. And uh, so now i got to figure out kind of the angle of this and then get this little notch back here better to weld it. So I've got some marks on it, and I'm going to go hit it with the grinder and see what happens. All right, so I'm going to clamp down there. I'm going to clamp up here, kind of giving me my angle. I had to grind out the back of this a little bit so it'll fit on the tube. And then once I put a, if I put a level on this, kind of get it where I want it, and that's where that tab's going to be. So then that's going to raise the bar up a half a bar width. And like I said before, that'll put the bottom of the bar at approximately the top of the crossbar. So i got to wheel the welder over here so I can somehow hold all this stuff in place and give this uh, thing a couple tacks. All right, see if I can't somehow hold this all in place and give it a tacky tacky level on here. I got my seat. I should just take the seat out, but I'm going to risk just covering it up for too little tack. If I burn a hole right through it, that's the story of my or That's my luck. I think I like that. If I could hold it like that, I don't have to pulse it somehow. Hold on, now I got my wire all jacked up. All right, let's see if we can't get this all held in place and tacked how I want it. Somewhat level. Got my seat covered up, my glass covered up, got the bar how I want it. Now I just gotta find a way to hold this tab in place level-ish so that it swing out works right and tack. Ah, gas is off. Every time I turn the gas off, I forget to turn it back on. Good thing it was just a tack. So that says level still. Kind of tack right on the back of it. All right, so that's tacked in place. It's gonna miss the door. Hopefully, hopefully there's still room for the door holding. Looks like there should be plenty. Whoa. All right, figure out what's next. Door bar is uh, just sitting there. I don't really have anything done. Got the tab tacked in place. Had to open this up just a hair to get the uh, end of this to fit in there. And we're going down through the hole. This is what's gonna be at the bottom of the uh, door bar to make it swing out. So as you can kind of see how that happens there. It's gonna go just like this. I've got a mark on the bar. That's where I want that to happen. And the measurement from here to here is three and a half inches. So I gotta measure this three and a half inches and put another mark and then that will be the mark that the curved bar from the frame will have to come into. So I gotta, like I said, I gotta figure out how to make all that happen. After a little more measuring and marking, I've determined I put a mark on the bottom here. So this is where the joint's gonna be and then I need to come through the floor three and a half inches. With this piece here, uh, I gotta figure out how to make it work because it's not a 90. So I gotta do some figuring over here on the frame. This is gonna come off the frame and up through the floor three and a half inches. I gotta make sure that is in the same plane or whatnot as the door bar. So let me do some head scratching on that and uh, I'll get back to you. So I measured from the frame to the outside of the door bar coming in. That's 10 and a half inches set up a little thing on the floor here. Measured over 10 and a half inches. So I got my laser cutting through at 10 and a half inches. So that's where the frame's gonna be. Unfortunately, it's not quite just that easy because that bar is also gonna be up. 
I threw this little guy on here and determined it's about a 30 degree angle. So now before I cut this, because as I rotate, you know, this is going to be cut at an angle. So as that rotates up, it's going to change that angle, I believe, right? Yeah, because right now if I cut it kind of like that's the low spot, but then that would be rotated up. So anyways, I got to try to figure out a way to rotate that up to 30 degrees and still mark it. So working on that now. There's got to be a better way to do this, but hopefully it's going to work. This is the tools and method I've came up with. Before I lifted the bar up, I ran, I put the laser right down the center of the bar so I knew it wasn't moving real crazy. And now I've lifted it up with a jack stand until it's telling me it's pretty close to 30 degrees. I still have the laser right down the middle on the mark there and you can't, it's hitting mark there too. I just put that in the way now. So now I'm gonna bring the laser back over to this line. You can see, you know, that's where I was before. We're still pretty much on line. I'm just gonna line the laser up with that line, mark the mark on the uh, bar. And hopefully that'll give me the cut to make. Well, it'll give me a cut to make. Hopefully it'll be the right cut to make. All right, so I got the laser on there. You can see my laser's over here now. So it did change this angle ever so slightly. Probably was pretty close before anyways, but. Let's see, I guess in theory, I should be able to turn that laser around, line it up on the line again, and mark the other side. And the final step to see if this is all gonna work out, I have it uh, in the chop saw. At 30 degrees, and I'm gonna go just on the outside of my mark. So hopefully, if anything, it's a hair too big. So let's make some sparks, and then we will take the door bar back out of there, and then we'll see if we can shove that one up in the hole, and if it looks like it's gonna work. So we got the uh, bar in there. My little cut is pretty good. I had to trim it a couple times, but we got her close. She's uh, going in the hole how we want it. We look on the inside. I have it kind of clamped and jammed in place at about that 30 degree angle. So that, you know, is gonna go to there eventually, right up to here. So now I got a mark. Where it goes through the firewall, I gotta cut it three and a half inches above that. And then we'll have to cut the bar itself to the right length. And then we should be able to just kind of like piece it all together and see where we're at. All right, we got this door bar piece together. Nothing is welded yet, but we got the joint down here. We got our piece going through the floor. We got the close to the right angle on it. Uh, it kind of slid a little bit. It's gonna go right about there. So that needs welded. And then we have the quick release up here. So that pops out. And then out she comes. It actually is really tight right here at the door, so I had to grind that a little bit. So I wish I had a little bit longer tab right there, or uh, I don't know how else that guy could have made it work, but we made it work like that. So all this stuff obviously needs welded. These things need welded around all the way around the bar, and then you drill a hole top and bottom probably and you know do like a plug weld too so same thing down there so obviously before i weld that one on the bottom to the frame i'll pull it out weld the end in it i can take the bar out of here weld all this stuff over on the table or whatever and then put it all back together and then this side of the roll cage is done we just have to do the same thing for the passenger side but i will need to order one more uh, door swing out kit from allison engineering i did just realize uh, that this bar is, I'm sure, gonna be in the way of the inner fender. I think this tab right here, there's a bar that comes across. I'm not totally sure. I haven't had the inner fenders on this thing for 20 years. I don't have inner fenders on the 57. I was also worried if they were gonna hit these brake lines uh, and these brake lines. But uh, yeah, one way or another, we'll make it work. I'm not gonna change this, so 
possibly no inner fenders or just some notching around or something when we get to that point. But uh, one way or another, it'll all go back together, right? Hopefully that's hot rod and you gotta just kind of make changes as you go. It's another due day here in the Montana garage and we're once again working on the roll bar. I think it's, uh, I lost count, but maybe day 197 on the roll cage install. We'll get there eventually. Today, I'm going to try to get the swing out door bar welded in. I had it all pieced together. I think I showed you that. And so now we're ready to do some welding. I actually, I came out to do it yesterday and uh, I thought, well, before I do that, I'm gonna run a couple practice beads on some tube and just kind of get my settings nailed down. And uh, yeah, it wasn't pretty. I ended up being out here for several hours just practicing my welding because I, I just couldn't make this bead look good going around the tube. So you can see my bazillions of beads I ran trying to mess with the settings and yeah it's just not pretty I just I mean it is what it is it's a MIG weld I wish it was I wish I knew how to TIG weld but I barely know how to MIG weld it's just you know one of these is going to be like boom right here in your face when you open the door so I'm hoping I can make it look at least presentable and uh I think I'm at that point but it's uh yeah I don't know I'm not super stoked about how this is going to turn out I thought about just paying somebody to TIG weld it but I think I'm just going to send it you know, that's kind of what I've done everything else on this project and it is what it is. I want to say I did it myself. I think we'll get a result that's good enough, hopefully. So I'm going to start with the one that's down here on the bottom. So it's a little less in a guy's face. So we'll get going on that one first. I have it pretty much prepped and ready to go. Here's the little bar. I got a little line on it so you can see where the clevis lines up right. And then we got two holes, top and bottom, uh, drilled in it for some plug welds. We'll start by tacking it. I probably should tack it and put it all in, in there, but I already had it all together. This piece, the final weld is gonna be this bar to the frame. So, you know, it can move forward and backward a little bit. I think I can put it all together, you know, just weld it and then put it all back together. But uh, we'll see. Anyways, wish me luck. And uh, I hope this is not a mistake. I'll start by getting this thing tacked together. And then I got to figure out how to like clamp it on the table in such a way that I can weld it. So I'll be back when we get that figured out. All right, we'll start by just, uh, tacking this bad boy in here and then I got to find a way to stand this pipe up and clamp it in place to weld around it. Line my line up. A little pack that I can hopefully weld over. In a few spots. All right, got her tacked. Still got my line lined up. I don't think there's any reason for me to put this back in the car and check it out, so I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna start with the uh, rosettes. Right, looks like I gotta clean my tip. Wish me luck. One little bit. It's not that I make an ugly bead. I mean, it looks nice. I just, I try to not have it built up so much, but I add more heat and then it doesn't work. I gotta add more wire. You guys know how it goes, but uh, anyways, we'll reposition and hope we can do, we'll probably have to do like four times around. I was doing three before, but uh, just the way this is kind of angled, I'm going to try to do four so I don't screw it up. So we'll be back. Here's piece number one. You know, I don't know. I guess that's what MIG welds look like, right? Uh, let's see somewhere. Where is it at? Can maybe right there. I got a little more buildup than I would like. But uh, I don't know. I don't think it's terrible. You guys can tell me what you think. But uh, one piece down, now we gotta do the big bar. It has uh, this on both ends, and then we gotta weld the little tab to the main hoop, and driver's side will be done. Let's get this other bar prepared for welding, shall we? Hey, battery, story of my life.
think we're ready to weld. The only thing I have to worry about on this bar is keeping the slots in the same orientation. And this piece of tubing, as you can see, has this line down it. That's where it's, I think, welded together. And uh, so I can just use that to get you know, those slots lined up. So I'm going to tack one, double check the orientation, tack the other one, and then we'll uh, weld them up. and the rosettes are welded. You guys out there can tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm gonna find a way to clamp this in a vertical position. When I was doing my practice welding, I thought, well, I'll just be able to be easy. I'll weld these on the table. And I was welding them like this, you know, and welding it with it laying down. I could not get the welds to look decent at all doing that. And I think it's because yeah, as you start, you're kind of going vertical up and then flat and then vertical down. And so it'd be a, the weld would be a big, piled up weld here and a little flatter and then way flatter and no matter how I mess with my heat and my speed I couldn't get that to go away so then I realized or at least what I decided to do was weld them vertical going around so I don't know if that's the right thing to do I think it is so that's what we're doing so I got to find a way to clamp this vertical and still have something to kind of rest on to weld it so let me uh, do some head scratching on that deal all right I guess the clamping project wasn't too bad I just clamped to the edge of the table I did put a little bit of this uh, nozzle gel tip dip on the bar down here just so I can try to hopefully the spatter won't stick to it. And we'll see how this goes. I may be able to weld all the way around in this position, but that depends on if I stay and not all out of whack and whatever. It's, I'm going to reposition if I have to. If I can make it all the way around, then I will. Probably not going to make it all the way around, but here we go. Yeah, I'm not gonna make it all the way around. I gotta move my feet too much, so it'd be all out of whack if I tried that. So it'll be probably three times around. Hopefully, I can get it up there. Well, it's something. One more side to go. Round three, this is the one that's right there in your face when you open the door. So uh, hopefully we can make her look presentable. Plan that one very good because I had to start and stop right on top where everybody's gonna see it. Oh well, live and learn. All right, after flying sparks around, we uh, took this outside and dipped it in the snow so she cooled off a little bit. Hit her with some brake clean to get that uh, tip dip or whatever off of there, and uh, that's where we're at. Not the prettiest welds, but compared to what my uh, practicing looked like yesterday, I'm pretty darn happy with how it turned out. So. Uh, one last thing to do, one last thing. I so, man, I stressed out about doing this, and uh, I don't know. I don't think it turned out too bad. Now, I planned on doing the other side of this, uh, what's it called? Swing out door bar today, because the one I ordered the pieces, I ordered some more of these pieces and parts. They were supposed to be here yesterday, but uh, Amazon failed me. Or not Amazon, whoever I, whoever's bringing it, UPS, somebody failed me. And uh, 
No, it's not coming until Monday. So we gotta get this thrown in the car, and then the hard, the tricky part still, we got one more weld to do. We gotta weld that bottom bar onto the frame. So let's throw this all back together, and then we'll uh, see how that's gonna work out. I have the door bar sat back in place, and I clamped this uh, piece of angle on here to try to keep that all you know, straight and in line so that that joint doesn't have a little flex in it when I go to weld it out here. So hopefully that'll work for keeping that all straight. And then I cleaned a little bit more of my beloved primer off the frame here. So that's what we got to do next. I will tack that this time. So I'll go grab the welder, put a couple tacks on there. Then I'll take that angle off there and make sure everything operates and it seems like it's going to work. And then we'll burn her all in and move on to something else. All right, tacky tacky. Then we'll see if the door bar works. Oh, well, we should try to get a couple. Might be a bit of a challenge welding this guy in. Hang on. All right, both those tacks did something. Shocker. Let's see if the door bar works. Minus the clamps. Minus the angle iron. Pull the pin. Nope, my tacks broke loose. Darn it, try again. And we're back. My tacks didn't actually break loose. It was just with only a couple tacks on it, there was still a bunch of plate on there. So I buzzed it in a little bit better. Pull the pin. The only thing I don't like is it's really close to the door, but I have it ground out so it actually misses, but it's pretty close. And then the other thing I should have probably paid attention to is angled that up a little bit so it swung up more instead of down, but actually, you know, what a guy's gonna do is get in, so it's pretty comfortable to pull it in your hand right here as you're getting in and throw it back up there. So anyways, it works, it functions. May or may not be perfect, but uh, it is what it is. All right, I still gotta fully weld that one in and then we'll clean up. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see any of this. I'm gonna be in the way and you're gonna be in the way of me, but we'll try. There's a tire in my way, a car in my way. Can't see squat. I don't know which way I want to go. Gotta go up, I guess. I think I'd rather go down, but I'm not gonna be able to see my puddle until it's around there. It's a struggle, I tell you. Well, as usual, I don't know if it's good or it's bad, but it's welded. I think it actually worked out pretty good. I'm gonna have light to show you guys, but then that light puts such a glare on it that you can't see it anyways. Anyways, one more thing welded. I may think about putting a little gusset in there, but it's probably good enough. We'll see. All right, so I did add a little gusset to where this bar hits the frame. It just seemed like I could move it around a little bit. I don't know where you guys can see it the best with that light, but right there. And uh, that stiffened it up for sure. But when I did that, of course, uh, it's, it's amazing what a little bit of heat does. It kind of like put a little bind in this thing and it still works, but it's just a little, it's kind of fighting me a little now where it works smooth before I did that. So now it feels like it would be better if this tab was up just about the thickness of the tab. Because it wants to go in smooth right there and you can see it's just a little, I lower it and then it goes in but it kind of binds up there. So I've only got this tacked. I think I'm gonna cut it loose and uh, see if I can get it to operate a little smoother and then burn it in. Always something. And we're back after some final fine tuning adjustments. Uh, I got this tab cut loose, moved it up just a smidgen. I mean, just barely any at all. And now she works pretty smooth. Barely misses the door, but it misses the door. Kind of hard to do one-handed, but I just did it in and out. So first I tacked it, made sure it worked. It operated smoothly. Welded this bead, made sure it worked. It operated smoothly. Then I put some weld under here. And that weld made this tab suck down a little bit. And then it would work, but it was really binding up. So I had to use the old brass hammer and persuade it up a little bit. Uh, just barely. It was just dragging a hair. And now it works smooth as butter as they say so we got one more side to do as soon as the parts show up but uh 
Oh, and of course we got to paint it and we still got to patch some sheet metal. But for all intents and purposes, we're finally done with the roll bar videos. Uh, we'll come back and touch on that little stuff later. But Hold uh, on, a... wait, 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 time out, time out. I'm here from the future and I have an update. That's right, it's an undisclosed, undetermined, I don't know how many days into the future it is, but I'm here to show you that uh, I have finished the passenger side door bar. Got some decent welds on this one, I think. Uh, you can't really see them down there, but this is the same story as the other side we just showed you through the firewall out to the frame. We got a little gusset there to stiffen things up. And also like the other side, this one operates smooth as butter. Voila. Also, I figured this is a good time to ask you our Montana Garage trivia question for this video. I'm gonna ask you a question, put the answer down in the comments for your chance to win the prize. Uh, you can go back to the last video for all the details on the trivia contest. I'm not gonna go over that every single time, but to ask this question, we gotta go back out into the lovely Montana spring weather. This says it's spring on the calendar, but we just got dumped with snow. Anyways, the trivia question for this video is, it's an easy one. Where did I get that car? Easy peasy. Answer down below in the comments, and then uh, you're entered to win the Montana Garage giveaway. All right, back to present day Montana Garage to finish up the video. But uh, that's it for now on the roll bar, and come back real soon because holy buckets, look what I got here. Quick performance Ford 9 inch third member. Finally showed up, so I got all the pieces and parts for that. So we're gonna try to uh, figure out how to put that thing together and then get it under the car. And finally, have a roller again soon. So thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, tell a friend. Come back next time, and uh, you can tell me what I'm doing wrong on the quick performance signage. I'm sure there'll be something. See ya.